Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Hunter, and this is my Leopard Gecko, Peyton. So today we're going to be talking all about Leopard Gecko diets. What should your Leopard Gecko eat? That is a good question. So before we get started, I guess I should do a legal disclaimer. I'm not a veterinarian, but I have been working with Leopard Geckos for over a year now, and... I've done tons of research and I've fed her lots of different things and I've just been able to see what works best. So we're going to talk about that today. I also wrote a care guide about this that you can see at careguides.hunterhawk.com. So after this video, go check that out and then it'll give you a nice little idea or some nice little ideas of what to feed your gecko. If you see me looking like right above the camera, it's because I have like a slide or just some bullet points of what I want to cover exactly. So first, leopard geckos do have very basic dietary needs, which is why they're a much simpler pet than say a bearded dragon or a blue tongue skink. They aren't going to need a salad every day or that type of thing. They just need their insects every other day or every two days depending on their age or if they're a juvenile they'll need insects every day but still that's a lot more simple than a bearded dragon blue tongue skink or another large type of lizard they can technically thrive off of mealworms but I don't recommend this I would recommend having more of a varied diet and leopard geckos also need supplements um, including calcium d3 and once a week a multivitamin, but we'll talk about those here in just a minute. So there are several insects that you can feed your leopard geckos, including mealworms, superworms, black soldier fly larvae, crickets, dubio roaches, and hornworms. So first let's talk about mealworms. Mealworms are kind of high in chitin, which is what their exoskeleton is made out of. But other than that, they are also pretty nutritious, so that's what I would say could be one of your staples. Another thing that could be one of your staples is our dubia roaches. So dubia roaches are illegal in Florida and Canada, so be mindful of that. But if you're not in Florida or Canada, I would definitely recommend getting some of those. So you can actually use code HUNTER at thedubiadude.com for 10% off not sponsored by the way I don't get any money when you guys use that code it just gets you 10% off because of an old sponsored video um but I seriously do recommend them um dubias are one of the most nutritious feeder insects if not the most um they're Peyton's absolute favorite insect and they're also my toad's absolute favorite insect which actually stay tuned for an upcoming video where I introduce you to my toad because you guys keep asking for it and I haven't made one yet. Next, black soldier fly larvae, which, well, let's be real, they're kind of not the greatest feeder for an adult leopard gecko because you have to feed like 10 bajillion of them. Um, they're also, they also go by BSFL or Phoenix Worms. I guess BSFL is a, an acronym for black soldier fly larvae. But still, um, anyways, they are larvae of black soldier flies which are high in calcium so they're good for a baby leopard gecko if you have a baby or a juvenile that's still growing I would definitely recommend mixing these into the diet but adults I really wouldn't because it's kind of not gonna help them that much but also regardless even if you are feeding phoenix worms black soldier fly larvae whatever you want to call them you still need a calcium supplement on every time you feed them. There's also crickets, but those just stink and are loud and can bite your gecko and get away and escape. And I personally would not recommend crickets for any animal. They're absolutely my least favorite feeder insect to use. And they're also one of the more expensive feeder insects because no one wants to deal with them. And you can also feed hornworms as a nice source of water for your gecko but you have to only feed captive bred ones wild ones their diet in the wild 
causes them to be toxic, so if you were to go get one out of your garden, it would kill your gecko. Now let's talk about insect sizes for your gecko. So a hatchling leopard gecko can eat small mealworms and extra small dubia roaches. They can also eat black soldier fly larvae. Um, I wouldn't recommend superworms for a hatchling leopard gecko. Now a juvenile leopard gecko, so one that's under a year but that isn't just hatched, so like the size you'll probably get one at. This A juvenile is around 15 to 30 grams actually maybe 15 to like 50 grams even, I would feed that gecko medium mealworms or small dubia roaches or medium superworms sometimes. At this point I would probably stop feeding black soldier fly larvae. And an adult leopard gecko will eat medium or large mealworms, medium dubia roaches, and normal superworms. I would never recommend feeding your leopard gecko giant mealworms because they're treated with an artificial growth hormone and they're not great for your gecko. Now frequency and amount. This is different based on the age of your gecko. Juveniles are going to eat every day or every two days depending on the individual. You'll want to feed a juvenile two appropriately sized insects for every inch of body length from nose to tail every inch from here to here is two appropriately sized insects for a juvenile not an adult now an adult is going to eat every two to three days and you're going to feed them whatever they can eat out of a dish in 10 minutes or if you're tong feeding them just whatever they'll eat before losing interest so your adult you're going to want to make sure they have a thick tail i'll insert some b-roll footage or an image on the screen or something right now to kind of show you how to judge that. So occasionally your leopard gecko is going to go on a hunger strike. That is something that is perfectly normal for adults. Now if your juvenile does it, that might be a cause of concern, but usually they're going to do it during the breeding season, which if you're in North America is going to be early winter, or a lot of times they'll go on a hunger strike during the winter if they are trying to brewmate. Now, unless you're gonna breed your leopard gecko, I don't see a reason to brewmate them. But if you're gonna breed your leopard gecko, let's hope you aren't having your first leopard gecko. You should own leopard geckos for quite a while before you try to breed them. Um, but yeah, if your gecko is on a hunger strike, as long as they're not losing more than about three or four grams, I'd say they're probably fine for about one to two months it's usually not something to worry about it's just caused by the change in seasons and it just triggers their instincts to go on a hunger strike because they would in the wild Peyton don't jump where should you get your insects so I wouldn't really recommend going to the pet store and getting your insects because they're kind of expensive there so if you want you can breed your own I've done that before but it was just too much work so I kind of stopped I always order my insects online for Peyton and my toad, and I've never had, well I have had a problem once, but I usually don't have a problem. Um, I've ordered dozens of times and I've only had one issue, and it was resolved by the seller immediately. They sent me the wrong thing, but it was all good because they sent me the right thing. So the two sites that I've never had an issue with that I would absolutely recommend are Rainbow Mealworms and TheDubiaDude.com. So the Dubia Dude, you can use, like I said previously, the code HUNTER for 10% off. And again, I don't get anything when you use my code, but you just get 10% off, so it's worth it. Um, they only sell Dubias, though. If you want to order other stuff, I would recommend Rainbow Mealworms. They've sponsored one of my videos in the past, but this video is not sponsored. You can use my link in the description to get 10% off your purchase and then I get a little kickback when you use that link. They sell everything from mealworms, superworms, waxworms, dubia roaches, hornworms, isopods, black soldier fly larvae, and even vinegaroons. This is my giant vinegaroon. 
his name or her name, I think it's a female. Her name is Montgomery. I got her from Rainbow Mealworms. Just wanted to show her off because I've never shown her in a video before. Um, Giant Vinegar and Mastigoproctus giganteus. They're an arachnid. They're closely related to spiders. I don't think it's focused. Focus. But yeah, she's kind of cool. Okay, back on track. A few moments later. That was a fun little tangent. Sometimes you just need a fun little tangent. Let's move on to our next topic. Supplementation. This is very important. Hold on. Peyton, I'm going to have to hold stuff, so you're going to have to go on my shoulder. Yeah, good girl. Let me make sure I'm actually in the frame this time. This is the third time I filmed this video, so I really don't feel like having to film it for a fourth time. So leopard geckos at every feeding, they need this stuff, the good stuff, as I call it. Calcium with D3. Calcium with vitamin D3. So vitamin D3 is the vitamin that allows your body to absorb calcium. Usually your body makes it because of absorbing absorbing UVB light. But inside your leopard gecko isn't gonna get U B V UVB. UVB. I can't speak. Unless you provide it through an artificial light. But I don't recommend that for leopard geckos. I don't use a UVB light. Some people do, but most people with leopard geckos don't, and they have great success. Because leopard geckos, unlike some insect or some reptiles, can absorb artificial D3. Synthetic D3, I mean. So basically, calcium is what allows them to have strong bones. If they don't have it, they will get metabolic bone disease, which is a disease that causes their bones to kind of turn to rubber, and it's very painful for them, and it kind of makes their entire life suck. And unless you want to make your gecko's entire life suck, you should make sure they have calcium with vitamin D3 dusted on their insects at every serving. Now, I kind of just did this so that I could, yeah, just dust calcium on my insects. And then it just kind of gets on there like it just got on my hand. Although, I don't know why I decided to get it on my carpet. But, it was just one little shake so I can vacuum it up. Sorry, Mom, if you're watching this. Um. Also, once a week, you should have multivitamins. So, this multivitamin is the Fluker's brand. The label came off the jar because I got it wet with the spray bottle. But it has vitamin A, D3, E, C, um, B1, B2, B6, B12, and then like a bunch of other stuff. Like there's this long, super long list. But anyways, just make sure you get a good brand and make sure that it has beta carotene as the source of vitamin A. Beta carotene is actually what lets your body make vitamin A. And if you get too much just plain vitamin A, it can actually kill your leopard gecko. It's called vitamin A toxicity. So make sure you use a brand that has beta carotene instead of just straight up vitamin A. Because otherwise they can't absorb it and it will kill them. That's why I recommend the Fluker's brand. It's the only brand of multivitamin that I have ever used. So I can't say it works better than the other brands. But I can say it works well. It's kind of inexpensive too, but most reptile multivitamins aren't very expensive. If you guys actually want to see all the products I use for my leopard gecko, there's a link to that at careguides.hunterhawk.com. Yay, time for the conclusion because I've been recording for way too long. This is just the conclusion, so we're going to go over everything real quick in like 30 seconds. Leopard geckos are insectivores. They can only eat insects, they can't eat plants. Um, you should vary their diet. And you can also view my care guide at careguides.hunterhawk.com. I hope you guys enjoyed this and learned a lot from it. Um, I put in a lot of work to this video. Literally, it took me like three hours to plan this video, and then several hours to film because I had to film it three times. Um, so I would love it if you would like and comment. And if you aren't already, please subscribe. It helps me out a lot and it helps me get recommended to other people. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. And I hope that if you decide to get a leopard gecko, that they're as adorable as Peyton is.
Okay, bye.